All right, guys, it's James. So this is my partner, Ryan. He's worked with me for about 10 years. Hey, we actually just wrapped up our 12-unit apartment building, or half of it, as we're dealing with some COVID problems. We're going to do our punch list. The units look amazing, but there's some unfinished items that we need the contractor to come back in before we advertise it for rent. So we're going to go through and kind of walk you through that process. Shit needs to be sanded down. This isn't shit, dude. A lot of the, the front of the building looks terrible. They're like, why didn't they replace these? There's some of these, like, these corners. They've done a few, but like, not nearly enough. So, James, when they paint, I see a lot of these kind of marks that they just, they're supposed to sand that cockpit. Yeah, so the proper install on this would be to sand this down mm -hmm. and then caulk underneath it. When, when they're prepping and spraying, that, so they come through and they blow through and they, they don't catch all of it. So what's wrong here? They're, they missed Oh, sections. shit, that's a straight up missed section. Yep. You know, when picking the right painter for your house or home, I yep. mean... What's your process there? How do you know it's good, bad? How do you know how cheap to go, how expensive to go? Because I feel like there's a happy medium. Yeah, so right? it depends on what you're doing, right? So like if we're doing a fix and flip property, it's a little bit higher end. We actually hire a little bit better painter. We adjust our budget to about $2.50 a square foot on the outside. With rental gray properties, typically we can get them painted for about a dollar to a dollar twenty-five a square foot. The big difference is, is those guys do less prep work. It's all, paint is all in the prep. How much are you sanding? How much are you caulking? How much are you pressure washing before they spray on? The cheaper guys will do a light pressure wash and just blast. Whereas a painter that you're paying on this property would be about, uh, that's gonna be a dollar a foot. So that's about 8,000, six, or $6,000 more. How do you calculate square footage on that perimeter house? You still say it's from the interior? That's yes, yeah, so we're just going off gross square footage. Yeah. So, the, But the thing is, we are giving them credit for the basement. So the yeah. gross square footage of this building is roughly 9,000 square feet. Uh -huh. And that's kind of how we come up with our equations. Cool. So um, as we get to the front door again, just all this stuff here is just going to lead to further problems down the road. Water is going to get in here. It's going to cause dry rot. And it's, so to not fix this now is going to cause us a bunch of money later, right? Same with right here. Like, there's no caulking or sealing or anything going on in here. So it's just, this is extra bad. Only the painter's responsibility? Yes, the painter is supposed to be caulking and prepping the whole thing. Okay. So that's at least what we paid for in the scope of work. Now also, one tip is make sure that's in your scope of work. Because if you just get paint exterior right. and it's cheap, then you're like, well, where's the prep? The prep wasn't included. You said paint. Got it. So you want to always specify, which we did specify with this guy prior. So, so what you're asking for, you ask, it's literally just called prep and paint. That's yeah, like prep and paint. Got it. So, but this was old original stuff. It's not going to look that good. So you also do need to know when to nickel and dime your contractor or not. You got to be fair across the board. Like this is, this right here is almost 100 years old. Yeah. It's going to look a little beat up. The stairs are almost 100 years old. It's gonna look a little bit uh, beat up. Now, if this was a luxury apartment where we were targeting 3,000 bucks a month in rent, we would actually replace all this. So, as we go through this property, things like this. This is stuff we did pay for that we want done correctly. Okay, here's this. Look at what the contractor also did. They put in a door stop. Oh no, they did it too late. Uh -huh. So look, they put it in after they already have broke it, but they didn't fix the repair. Typical contractor bullshit you gotta deal with. So they go, oops, I punched a hole in the wall, I should put this in here, and then they don't even fix their own hole. So lots of overspray marks. Wait, where's their hole? Right here. Oh, that hole, oh shit. Oh, hmm. So if you think your contractor's gonna make it turnkey, it doesn't happen that way. You gotta babysit them. Okay, so same problem. Look at this. The contractor just did this because he saw a problem, but then he didn't do this one. It hits the heater directly. So that heater is going to get busted. Open it. There's no door stop. Whoa. What the tenant's going to do is break this door. Well, you might have broken first. Well, <laughs> so we need a door stop here. Now, because you have a heater here, you can't do a traditional door stop, so you need to do a hinge stop. So they put it in the hinge, it stops it prior to going in. So, and who's responsible? So that's, you put that on the contractor just to kind of do that kind of on his own? Or do you have to request that prior? Like what, so it's the contractor's so responsibility? So that's in all the trim out quote, which is your door handles. So they, they bid that, they're installing all the door handles, um, all the smoke detectors, 
the door stops, it's all a line item on there. So it's oh, okay. all in their finishing package. Got it. Okay. Set, set down on so as we get into the bathroom, things that we see right here, toilets aren't caulked, right? So these can move, they can leak later. This needs to get sealed up. They still have it sitting on a cardboard shim. See on this side too. Yeah, they have it shimmed up for whatever reason. I think that's to get their caulk in. That's because the floor is probably not level, which they were supposed to level up. Yes, okay. So they need to fix that. Uh, you want to check your hot water and cold water every time. See this? Plumbing was done. That's a problem. Cold water works. Hot oh. water, no go. Wow. But he said he was done. Here's that paint. So this has been cold here. This has not been cold here. So water can get back in, causes rot, their tiles start giving away, it will break out at that point. So these are just fine little details. And you see the guys have got it 95% done, but then this is gonna cause you a lot. So if we don't fix this now in two years, all this is gonna be rotted out. We're gonna have to rip out our tile and fix it. Can we pay him to fix the drywall? Mm, no, but that's a patch that he should. Yeah, he should this fix. is a shit patch job. See this? They, we paid them to patch this. They didn't even texture it. They just used a little broom to kind of clean it up. So we don't expect it to be perfect, but we do expect it to be a little bit better than that. So as we go through, we're into our kitchen. We want to check our heaters. Look. Oh wait, these aren't air blowing ones. No, but it should click on. Did you okay. see them click? I do not feel click. So you want to. So as you're doing your punch list, turn on your faucets, flush your toilets. Turn on your heaters, make sure everything's working. All breakers are good. Everything's been labeled. This is something you always want to do when your electrician is putting in a new panel. Make sure they label because later it's going to cause you a problem. And the time to do it is when they already just got done with the project. Good. Again, we got to check water. So the hot water is just busted in this unit. Cold water is working, hot water is not working. Okay. So if we go put this up to advertise this for rent too early, Tennis are going to come in, they're like, I don't live in some shitty unit that's just not working right. It makes them feel bad, that makes them not want to pay. Also, one thing you need to do on your countertops, lots of little things to be caulked and sealed. As things get down here, it causes water and damage inside that wall. Another flip tip check contractors don't just clean, they like to cover. So if you go behind, make sure you pull out your range and stuff because this is a cleanliness issue to where. Drywall dust will get in the unit, it will be complaints from your tenants. Make sure that they clean. You know, common sense is clean behind something before you stub it in. Contractors have no common sense. So just, you have to control the common sense. What's wrong with? So they miscut their plates. So this is for the cable wires. Mm. And then they just didn't put in their plates, right? So. These are things that just need to get fixed by the contractor because we paid them to. We're gonna have to fix it anyway someday. The smoke detector, not wire bright. What do you get for you, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I got hops. Yeah, it's pretty bright. Can you help out? Yeah. So, as we're checking all of our utilities, we get into our new laundry set, which we did add in. So, we actually installed this um, to get more value out of our rent. One thing, they got the venting, but they didn't install the actual fan. Continue to go through the building. Nice little closet area. Man, they did not do a very good job leveling these floors right here. So we paid the contractor to Jip Creek the floors. So what Jip Creek is, so a lot of times in Seattle or any neighborhood that has old homes, homes settle. Doesn't mean the foundation's bad, but they're settled. So the wavy floors get a little kind of wavy. So what we do is we actually have something called Jip Creek come in, it's called self leveler. They pour it on and it gets everything on the same height so it actually fills all the gaps. Then as your tenant's walking through, they don't feel like they're walking through a wave. So I can feel a one inch drop, one inch gap right through here. Well. <laughs> we paid, flip tip. <laughs> <laughs> Level your floors, make sure the contractors do it. This is a bottle check method. <laughs> so we did pay to have them these all leveled. Obviously they're not. Okay, okay wait, so how do they, do they have to take out the floors to fix that? Yeah, they're going to need to. Mm -hmm. 
Now, it's one thing if we had hated well, having none, and we just said, a lot of people will just go right over the top, and they're cool with it. Yeah, it's way worse over there. Look how they left this paint. Oh, it's, yeah, it's all over. This is a terrible, this is lack of prep. They didn't put any tape here, so then it just bled through all the way down. Wow. And you guys, I've worked with this contractor for eight years. Doesn't mean he does a good job. You have to babysit him. He will get the job done. He does do good work, but you have to babysit him. And you guys, we're being pretty generous because this is a rental property. If this was a flip property, we would be pulling this house apart. But we also would have replaced a lot more of the stuff as well. This is all new paint, all new railings. There's no reason there should be a hole here. Uh, so good open spaces, really good units in general. Yeah, just a hole right in the drywall. Oh wow, a huge hole. Yep. So the purpose of blue tape is to put a red flag target on it so then they always know exactly where to put it. Wow, this is a cool room. Yes, yeah, so this is actually our penthouse unit. It's the corner unit. It's got a bunch of windows. This is where all the magic happens. So this is why I use a different yeah. camera for everyone's spot. Oh. They framed that dude. This shit contract we're talking about framed that man. Doing some parkour over here. It's for the camera, those are all five feet high ceilings in there. You just. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the, the, the painter says they're done. Still paint tape on there. Alright, so the most important thing when punching out your property is having a clear scope of work with your contractor. So the reason we can actually bring this contractor back and hold back his final payment until he's completely done is because in his scope of work we specified the things that we're calling out. For example, the floors are a little bit un not level right now. In our scope of work, it said install new flooring, including leveling of floors. If, the, if, the, if my scope of work was vague, I could not get him legally to come back and fix these things. So make sure your scope of work is clear, is concise, and what the expectations are, and then you can get your blue tape and your punch list completed quickly.